So for in this, uh, in this kind of networks, uh, there are some uh, there are some new um, or there occur some new uh, things which are introduced. I think with Hard Seven, um, which uh, have uh, also an which must be handled in somehow in the FTT uh, system because there are now uh, the possibility to have delayed responses. That is uh, means that an an, an hard um, uh, a slave or a communication per, um, device cannot send an, an answer of a uh, foreign command in the uh, in the short time frame which is defined in the hard specification. So it has to send a delay uh, back, a delay answer, and say, "Okay, I bring an answer later. Please uh, call again." That's uh, the principle of this, and. Um, in FTT now, we have a definition now how to handle this uh, because um, someone has to handle this. And the definition is that an, an, an DTM of a device that uh, might send this kind of delayed responses, it has also, it should be um, capable of handle this uh, delayed responses. So, for example, make a an, an, an later uh, request and, and or it could also be possible that an, an, a device in the middle, a gateway device, can handle this. And then uh, it is possible that the device DTM from the device which sent this delayed response will not see the delayed response because it is handled in the stage before in this uh, gateway DTM. That is also a, a possibility. So you cannot uh, be sure that you will get this uh, delayed responses. Then we have uh, this, um, yeah. Go back one slide. Yeah. Um, Emerson has the wireless network running with a COM DTM. And a, a parent in between has to handle the delayed responses if it's an old heart type that's out on the wired connection because none of the DTM ships in the world know what to do with delayed response, so it can't be propagated back up. But if it's a heart wireless device, which is the heart mm -hmm. wireless category, it should know what to do. Yes. Uh, yeah. Delayed response because mm -hmm. it's a heart seven release. Yes, I, I think all high heart wireless uh, DTM should be capable of handle this uh, delayed response. And, yes. and for heart FSK, is that required to handle Delayed response. I, I'm, I'm not really. I'm not really sure if is uh, if this uh, this delayed response mechanism also uh, possible on the uh, on the FSK. Yep. So I think yes. Then if the if the device may send this delayed response, also a DTM must uh, be able to handle this. Yes. Um, it, it, I, I think it, I don't know if all devices will send. Uh, delayed responses. Maybe a device uh, always has the possibility to send in the, in the right time, then it will never send a delayed response. Then I, I think DTM is not forced to, to implement something about this. It might be safer for a part FSK device, DTM, to handle delayed responses, even if the device can't send it, because the gateway in between, in between can send it. Uh, but then, you know, but then the gateway, the gateway the DTM is responsible for the delayed response. So exactly. When you, when you go once yeah. and then, yeah. so when, when you're thinking here, so you see different devices, and, and for each device you have a DTM representation. And, 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 and depending where the delayed response is sent now, so when we say the delayed response is sent by the wireless adapter, then the wireless adapter is DTM is responsible to handle the delayed response. And then what, what Stefan said, um, when you have an hard 7 device that also internally inside of the hard 7 device will produce also the uh, delayed responses, then the device DTM is responsible for this special device. So if it's a hard 7 wired device, yeah. the device DTM itself. And and the heart, a heart seven device um, uh, creates delayed responses. 
Yes. Well, not, not, not the gateway mm -hmm. and not the adapter, so mm -hmm. the device directly. Mm -hmm. But, but if here this is a device which uh, does not know about uh, uh, this uh, delayed responses, does not send it, and also the, the DDM may not know about this because uh, when this adapter sends the delayed response, then this DTM has to handle this. And when uh, the wireless gateway sends the delayed response, then this DTM has to handle it. So this DTM will never see a delayed response from, from uh, these uh, de devices because this is uh, managed in uh, DTMs before. So only you can only see delayed responses which you have uh, produced by yourself, by your own device. But how do we tell in those two stages that the device, the D device DTM no, can handle delayed responses or not? And the device DTM, I, I think it's, uh, it's easy. If, if a device DTM can handle, then it should handle. Then it, it will uh, do this. And um, so it is always catched at the first place where it uh, arrives, this delayed response. Yeah, but if the device DTM can handle it, if it's a hard seven yeah. device and it's FSK, mm -hmm. then it, it will handle this, yeah. Then the device DTM should enable delayed response whether the device actually causes delayed response or not. Because the adapter can do delayed response, the gateway can do delayed response to hard IP. Yes, but, but uh, the, the difference is also, the problem is um, here you have uh, can have also this uh, old FTT 1.2 DTMs and it should work also in the same way. So that's why the device uh, here, the adapter should Keep, uh, should handle its own delayed responses because these delayed responses from the adapter should never occur here in this uh, DTM because it cannot handle this, it's an old one. And also in the other way around, if you have here a an, an wireless device, I, <laughs> maybe that's a bit of a, a, a diff difficult example, but if you have here a wireless device that is um, uh, FTT2, or FTT2 compliant with FTT1 uh, one interface, and you have an, an communication DTM, which uh, is FTT1.2 and does not know about this uh, delayed responses. Then it also works because uh, this goes through the communication DTM and will then be handled by this FTT2 uh, wire, uh, wireless device DTM. And uh, um, this uh, old communication DTM uh, does only uh, sends this uh, message through and, and does not handle this, but it works because uh, then this DTM will catch it. It looks like the new heart annex for 1.2.1 includes the same bus. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah. It's all, all the same. We're trying to figure out mm -hmm. whether the communication DTM should handle all delayed responses and send nothing back or send all delayed responses and let the device DTM crash? No, that's but not a good solution. Not, um, <laughs> or, or how do we tell which, which device DTMs can handle delayed response? All device DTM handle late responses, which devices can send late responses. That's the, the rule. Late responses or no? Delayed responses. No, no uh, I think. The You're delayed, talking about delayed responses. Yeah, no. Delayed response is response code 33, 34, mm -hmm. or 35 from the heart specification. It has a very special meaning. And most device DTMs that are written today do not know what to do with that response code because the communication DTM gets it from the gateway in heart, I, in heart IP. It puts it in the wrapper communicating between the, device, the comm DTM and the device DTM as the response code and sends it back. Yes, but this response code could, should not uh, go back to the DTM uh, at, the, at the end here, of the device DTM, yeah. because it is possible that it cannot handle this. Yes. So, so the D DTM before, the, all DTMs which can handle this should uh, handle this. But there are wireless delayed response time limits that will take 10 minutes to complete mm -hmm. when you change the topology of the network. Um, so 
there's no device DTM in the world that's willing to wait 10 minutes for a response. <laughs> yeah, but then you can implement such behavior in your gateway to say, okay, I have an, a delayed response where the network is changing now. Yeah, and, but, and but, but the hard specification tells the gateway to send it to the com. Yes, so, but now so we are, I'm on the DTM part, so, and, and I see, okay, there is a late response, and the network is restructuring at the moment, and then I, uh, the, the, the parent DTM can send to the device DTM, okay, we are on the board, please reconnect later. So um, to, 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 to visualize to the, to the customer, so I, I understand so the, the problem is so now the user wants to get the, the information from the device and it takes 10 minutes and nobody knows why it takes 10 minutes. So the user mm -hmm. will contact the hotline and ask him <laughs> what's that. So I, I think this is part of this uh, adapter or a gateway to, to handle this somehow, to, to say, uh, give a response or... or or show something to the user. <laughs> but that, that's yeah. not what the Heart Foundation just released <laughs> last October. So. so yeah, there's some some resolutions, but uh, I was hoping that the bus category for FTT2 or FTT1.2 new releases would allow the gateway com DTM to look at the bus category it's connected with and say if it's the old heart, heart basic, it doesn't know what delayed response and handle them themselves. If it's a new FSK or wireless heart or any of the other ones, then and it's heart seven compliant, then the device DTM should know what to do with the delayed response mm -hmm. and have a, a retry loop built in and so the device DTMs that use FSK and wireless heart need to have delayed response handling in them. Mm -hmm. okay. Then, then mm -hmm. the comm can say, oh, it's an FSK channel, send it back to the device DTM. It's a basic heart, handle it ourselves, much the way many mm -hmm. of the MUXs do right now. Yeah, this is also a possible way to uh, to define this, but uh, I think that we will see that, uh, and I think we will have some uh, experience then about this, and maybe there is uh, also some uh, addendum or some definition changes here. But um, that's how it is at the moment, and we will see. <laughs> I'm sorry to put you on the spot. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, now it is addressing. Oh, no, I'm short. <laughs> Sorry. Um, okay, you, um, in heart there are several ways to address the device. It's not only this short address number, it's also the, the, uh, the long address. Uh, and and all, I think the most important is this long tag because this is uh, required for the wireless network. And um, in this uh, address data types, there is a property addressing mode where the communication DTM can uh, select which uh, way to address is, uh, is the, the active one. So it, uh, in a wireless uh, network, the communication DTM would set this to this long tag as addressing mode. And uh, so um, the device, it sets uh, during the, the configuration this address, or which contains this long tag to the device DTM. And later when the device DTM wants to communicate, it sends back this uh, address uh, data type and then the, uh, the communication DTM has the possibility to, to see this uh, long tag and uh, knows what, how to uh, communicate this on, on the um, network. And uh, we have also some uh, specialized data types for this IP and uh, for wireless. And of course, of course, there is an, an IP address and a port which is special for IP and also for the wireless um, wireless network we have this network ID, which is also an information which is uh, necessary for building up this uh, network. Then we have an, an data type for uh, network data, and here a uh, communication the parent can see what a hard revision the child DTM supports 
and what is the, the address range for the polling address because the, it could be uh, 1 to 15 or 1 to uh, 64 and so in, in communication DTM can see how, uh, <coughs> how it can handle this uh, device DTM. Oh, sorry, wrong direction. So um, I think it's uh, for the communication data types, I can keep it short because it's um, mainly the same as in FTT 1.2. We have a connect request and uh, connect response and disconnect request and disconnect response and uh, the transaction requests for transferring the data. Uh, also this um, data types are similar to the data which was uh, in the XML documents before in FTT 1.2. And uh, the difference now is this, this, uh, this device address is changed and um, and in the disconnect request there is a difference to FTT 1.2 because there is no longer this abort message. It is now handled with the uh, disconnect request. But that, that is general for all FTT 2 protocols. Then we have uh, now a definition for uh, process data information which a DTM should expose to a system. And, um, Mainly it is um, an information about this um, device variable codes and uh, device variable assignment which uh, can uh, an, an system can use this information to, to build up the, the, the process which uh, gathers the, um, the process data, the real um, um, measuring values from the device for example. Then uh, there is a an, an, uh, definition for exposed data. We have now this um, i-instance data and i-device data interfaces. And the uh, specification now defines um, which information uh, sh shall be exposed and uh, which structure of information and how the structure is of this information. And uh, this is also ma mainly this uh, device information about the device variables and dynamic variables and is also information about this uh, extended device status. So then, then we have, uh, as I already said, uh, made an, um, an update for the FTT 1.2 specification. I will just shortly notice that because um, we have there made the same categories, new categories, and uh, we have uh, made uh, an, a possibility to um, export this, new, this additional information, for example, this address information in the um, XML document for get and set parameters. And in this, uh, in this way, it is possible to also have an FTT 1.2 DTM with uh, this uh, new um, addressing modes and uh, this new uh, capabilities which we now have in FTT2 and also the transformers for for hard will also use this information if it is there and so we have an, an full uh, full interoperability between FTT1 and FTT2 